we have this day every year at the Capitol. It's one opportunity that we take to let our elected officials hear about HIV and why we care so much about this issue. There are a couple things. It was exciting. It was sort of exhilarating. It was empowering. It was also intimidating. Um, it was a little frightening, um, but it was a it was a really good experience. I look forward to it every year because of the energy. It's a reminder for me of how important my job is. One of the reasons why we started Positive Leaders is to try to get the voice of people living with HIV in front of their policymakers. And the really exciting thing this year was that we had more people register than ever before. It's awesome though to be there with a group of people who support you, who are there you know, for the same reasons that you are, who experience a lot of the same things that you do. Education is crucial to help reduce the spread of this disease. My name is Rob Peely. I've been positive for almost 30 years. It was 1990. I knew the person that I had been with was HIV positive. I went to pick up the test results and the answer was yes and I was like, well, what is HIV, do, or do I have to tell people that I have AIDS? You know, I was ignorant. I'm afraid that if there's a cut in funding that we're going to revert back to having a pandemic. I mean, Sub-Saharan Africa does a better job at controlling AIDS than we do. And the lack of any cohesive prevention message has really affected the younger generations. It really concerns me that our society feels so safe that they aren't thinking about protecting themselves. I think there's probably been about 10 years where education was dropped. My grandfather was a career politician and he really influenced my views on politics. One of the things he always said to me was, you can't complain about what's happening in government unless you're willing to participate in government. You know, part of it is, uh, in, in a sense, a celebration, because I think it's so incredibly powerful when people come to the Capitol and have their voices heard, uh, especially folks in the HIV AIDS community and their allies and friends. So to step into the Capitol, the most public of squares, and to really have your voice be heard is, is extremely powerful, very affirming for me. So I've shared some of my stories quickly and nervously, and please tell your legislature that we do matter, I matter, and I count on you to keep me alive. Thank you. Well, the most important thing we do as elected representatives, in my opinion, is meeting with the folks that we represent. It's really important for us in a democracy, in a representative democracy like we have, to really listen and learn from the folks who are the most affected by the decisions that we're making, whether that's on policy or laws or the budget priorities that we're setting. There's no way for us to really know what we're doing unless we're hearing directly from the people we represent. So then what happens to me? I do realize that we're facing a $6.2 billion deficit in Minnesota, but I do not think that making cuts to HIV health care is the answer. I do rely on Ryan White funding and state funding for my co-pays, my meds, and if it was cut, I would not be able to afford my meds, I wouldn't be able to afford my doctor visits. My meds are 2500 a month, my doctor visits are over 1000 a month. Eventually, my health would go down, I'd probably be in and out of hospitals, and then, in the end, probably die. To me, oh my, and my husband and I, um, we feel 
that uh, hopefully the financial aid will be there for people with HIV and AIDS because it will drain us uh, if we're going to be totally responsible for her. And if they cut the budgets, um, it's going to be really tragic. The Minnesota AIDS Project has been instrumental in my survival. I know a lot of people rely on other AIDS service organizations for food, um, for housing, for transportation. Without any of those things, it's all a giant puzzle, and each of these are pieces in, pu in the puzzle that help a person survive. And if just one is taken away, the puzzle isn't complete, and the person could end up dying. At the beginning, the shame and stigma was a lot worse than it is now, but I mean, I'm just amazed that it hasn't gone away. The shame and stigma that still exists from HIV, which does not exist for any other um, terminal disease. I mean, it's a germ, it's a virus. But the whole relationship issues, that's a whole other topic that people don't think about when you have to disclose and explain to your potential partner, you know, and you get that rejection over and over again. That just wears you down emotionally. And people don't think about that part. They just think about it's not a death sentence, so who cares? So that's, to me, the part of the story I really want people to understand. Um, I think it's important because there's so much stigma around being HIV positive. And I think if those of us who are positive are willing to sort of stand up and say, I'm HIV positive, I'm healthy, I'm living you know, a, a really good life, I think it takes away some of the stigma. Um, I think it's important too to force people to interact with us on a personal level and put a face with the disease as opposed to just thinking it's some sort of disease that, doesn't, that affects you know, gay people or homeless people or drug addicts or whatever, you know, to look at someone in the eyes and say, uh, you know, I'm HIV be positive and them see a person rather than a statistic or a marginalized population. A friend of mine that I grew up with, his, his brother was gay and not long after I graduated from college he died from AIDS and his obituary read that he had brain cancer. I was heartbroken because they had to hide his disease and hide the way he died because of homophobia. And I've never forgotten that. That's almost 20 years ago. I just feel really strongly about this being a public health issue and about people's human rights. And I feel that myself, and it's what motivates me to keep doing this work. Well, when people come, uh, either visit me in my office or folks that I interact with out in the community or in the form of testimony in front of our committee hearings, what I want to hear about, I of course want to hear about the facts and the figures and, th and the statistics how much things cost, how many people are affected, etc. But I also want to hear the personal stories. How are people personally affected? Uh, what are their personal lives like? How do they use the services that we're paying for? What would happen if they would, didn't have access, if, if the services that, that are essential to their lives weren't available anymore? Uh, that's extremely important. It really adds the human dimension, the human element, to what can otherwise be fairly abstract information. And the best part about it is, is that you see someone who's never met with their elected officials, didn't really even know who their elected officials are, and they go sit in their office for 10 minutes, and they have a real conversation with them about why, they're, why they care about HIV, if they're HIV positive, they talk about their life and their personal story, and it really makes a difference. And seeing the light bulb go off in someone's head about, wow, I, I actually have a lot of power here to educate people who are making important decisions and to really impact what happens with policy here in Minnesota. I love my job because I love seeing people feel empowered to, to do that advocacy work on their own and really, really make a difference. The first support group I went to in 1990, every woman in the room went around and said, yes, I'm living for my child. You know, they're all HIV positive and it came to me and I went, Oh, I don't have any children. What you know? And at that point, it was like I will not transfer this to a child. So I was like, "Well, I gotta live for me, and I'm gonna spend every bit of my effort living my life for me because I'm worth it." So that was the real awareness, and that was when the fight began. Fight for life. 